House and Senate appropriators are moving forward with their fiscal year of 2024 funding for NASA. The House committee is recommending $25.37 billion, a greater reduction from the current spending. Meanwhile, Biden requested a 7.1% increase for the fiscal year 2024 at $27.2 billion. Regardless, House budget legislation provides up to $501,800,000 to fund the development of the second mobile launch platform for the SLS rocket in 2024 alone. Remember how the mobile launcher was originally supposed to cost $383 million? Well, if this funding goes through, it will push the money allocated to date above a billion dollars and construction has yet to really begin. Which is incredible. Incredibly insane, that is. This even shocked Elon Musk, the world's richest billionaire and also the founder of SpaceX. But is NASA's Artemis worth the cost? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. In recent SpaceX legal documents, it has been confirmed that total spending for the Super Heavy Starship Development Launch Site's Megazilla Launch Tower and Factories is $3 billion. SpaceX will spend another $2 billion on Starship and Launch Facilities in 2023. In total, SpaceX will have spent $5 billion on its Starship vehicle and launch infrastructure by the end of this year. Yep. $5 billion for the whole thing. In contrast, only NASA's second mobile launcher will cost up to a fifth of that number. This is not to mention, it has been many years behind schedule. Wow, Musk expressed when hearing about this number. Just one word is more than enough to express the feeling of amazement, or perhaps audacity? that that number brings. In fact, NASA has already built a mobile launcher for its Space Launch System rocket at a cost of $668.7 million. That program also suffered enormous cost increases after NASA's Constellation program was canceled, meaning the agency had to redesign the tower to fit a different rocket, the SLS. But that mobile launch tower will have to be replaced after just three missions because NASA's plans to use a different version of the SLS, one with a more powerful upper stage that would extend the rocket's height by some 40 feet, for later trips to the moon in its Artemis lunar campaign. The later version of the SLS will be capable of delivering 40% more payload to the lunar surface. The added launch tower expense and expected delay was just one of a host of problems the Inspector General identified with the program. It laid most of the blame on the contractor, Bechtel, for its poor performance and underestimation of the ML2 project scope and complexity. ML2 is short for Mobile Launcher 2. Aside from that, NASA's management practices contributed to the project's cost increases and schedule delays. For example, the space agency awarded the contract to Bechtel before the, for the rocket's enhanced upper stage had been finalized. Strangely, despite Bechtel's lackluster work, NASA awarded the company $8.2 million in awards meant for good performance. Why do you think this is? But perhaps this is not too surprising. NASA began developing the SLS in 2011, just after the cancellation of its Constellation Moon program, which would have used an Ares rocket to send Orion to the International Space Station, the Moon, and eventually Mars. Back then, the development of the giant rocket was budgeted at $10 billion, with an expected debut voyage in late 2016. But development costs, budget issues, design changes, political hurdles, and other bumps in the road delayed the rocket's first launch to 2017, then 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, and finally to 2022. A lot has happened in space over the decade plus of SLS development. In 2016, the same year that SLS was originally supposed to launch for the first time, SpaceX's founder and CEO Elon Musk revealed the company's design for its next generation deep space transportation system a huge rocket-spaceship combo known as Starship. Starship will be the most powerful launch vehicle ever built when it comes online, Musk has said. Ultimately, he envisions hundreds of Starships landing a million people on Mars in the coming decades. So far, only a handful of the company's Starship prototypes have gotten off the ground, but none of them on orbital tests. But a full-stack Starship orbital test flight happened in April, 
The next attempt is expected sometime later this year. If that mission proves successful, SpaceX will have taken its super heavy lift vehicle from the drawing board and into space in far less time than it took NASA to do the same with the SLS. SpaceX's goal is to build an entire fleet of starships and launch multiple vehicles on a daily basis at an average launch cost of a million dollars or thereabouts. By contrast, the framework of the Artemis program, paired with construction timelines for a full SLS Orion stack, puts NASA's rocket on a launch cadence of about once every two years. Also, SLS is not built for reuse. The entire vehicle, Sands Orion, is based on Space Shuttle era technology. SLS's core stage boasts the familiar orange tint of the shuttle's main fuel tank, with a diameter to match, though the SLS tank is taller to accommodate higher volumes. Its two solid rocket boosters are also scaled-up versions of their shuttle counterparts. The rocket's main engines are leftover RS-25 engines made for and flown on previous space shuttle missions. A report from NASA's Office of Inspector General released in November of 2021 outlines just how much development costs increased for SLS between its first iteration and now, and revealed just how expensive each SLS launch will be. According to the report, NASA will end up spending a total of $93 billion on the Artemis program between 2012 and 2025, and each SLS-slash-Orion launch will have a price tag of about $4.1 billion. From this perspective, many analysts say that private enterprise should bear the brunt of ferrying people to the moon and Mars. Such arguments are unlikely to have much sway at a time when China and Russia are both vying to establish themselves as major space powers and have revealed plans to construct their own space stations. In fact, China has already completed their station back in 2022. In today's strained political climate, the U.S. cannot be expected to allow such enterprises to proceed without providing its own commitment to flagship projects that will involve crewed missions. Besides that, the coming togetherness that occurs when so many have a stake in a program as large as Artemis should not be underestimated. Hundreds of thousands arrived to the Space Coast for the Artemis 1 launch, and they're not here just to see a big rocket. People from all walks of life across the United States have poured their careers into making SLS a reality. The glory days of the Apollo moon missions are a distant memory for some, and an awe-inspiring historical feat for most. Artemis is helping reignite that spark for exploration in a way that has allowed people to feel invested in the program's success. People feel ownership over Artemis. When NASA says, we are going, the agency isn't talking about some in-group of elite astronauts. They're talking about us. We are launching people back into deep space. We are sending humans back to the moon. We are. All of us. And we're doing it together. But is the cost of the SLS and the Artemis program as a whole worth it? Maybe. If Artemis accomplishes all that it has set out to accomplish over the next 10 years or more, that maybe could shift to a probably. Once SpaceX's Starship is launching as often as the company hopes, it's possible we'll see a cancellation of the Artemis similar to that of Apollo. But the difference, hopefully, would be the emergence of a bold and flourishing space industry to cement the obsolescence of SLS, letting a new age of human exploration blossom, rather than another 50 years of human spaceflight stagnation in which people never venture beyond low Earth orbit. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.